Welcome back everyone to another in-house league match here as we once again have the same captains from the last game. We have Saute versus Busk not only picking their teams but once again piloting the drafters position here. So on the Legion side we once again have Saute and he is going to be captaining Chris, Bilbo, Sunk, and Balor. That is the Legion team. And then we have Bus captaining Novi, Janko, Rastahan, and Imbanuts. So we have some different players here in this next game here. And thus we might see some different picks and bands. We have Draconis, Madman, and Monarch banned away from the Legion team. Engineer, Chipper, and Devourer going to be banned away here from the Hellborn team. First pick going to be going over to Legion. They will pick up the Pebbles here. So we will be having a Pebbles pick. And, well, we typically see that in the mid lane, played by Saute, but we could very well see a support pebbles. You never know with uh, with things kind of developing. We could have some different strategies in the, in the midst here. You never know what we're going to see in in-house league. So buckle up, and we'll have to wait and see what ultimately does happen as Prisoner and Glacius going to be picked up here by the Hellborn team. So we could see that as a dual mid. Or even an aggressive tri lane in the works. As we saw last game, the prisoner tri lane working for the Legion team. But we have a Luna and Behemoth coming out following up the Pebbles. So this is almost kind of old school with the Pebbles, a Luna Behemoth. Something we've seen throughout Han's history. The off lane Behemoth and the Pebbles dual mid or uh, even a roaming Behemoth could definitely um, be in the works here. So we'll have to wait and see how they finish off their lineup here on Legion's side, but uh, definitely a lot of long-range potential here with the Behemoth and Aluna. Not the strongest lane presence heroes, but definitely when it comes to roaming and setting up kills, that is on the menu here for the Legion side. I will say, if they do run a Prisoner dual mid against the Pebbles, that is quite powerful, especially with the, the Glacius. He's very strong in laning phase. And uh, that might be something that Legion potentially tries to avoid as well uh, if they are not feeling confident in fighting the prisoner. That is one of his biggest strengths being ran in the mid lane. And we already see the Wretched Hag going to be banned out last game, that one proving to be too strong. They're going to follow it up with a Soul Stealer and Master of Arms ban here from the side of Hellborn. We see Gemini and Rally going to be the first two bands. Last one coming up here from help uh, from Legion. So Sate will have to think carefully about his last ban here. Looks like Nuts has finished losing. He has won a game. Must feel great for him. And it is going to be Geomancer. They will last ban the Geomancer. They're targeting the support. So we have Hellborn going to open the gates here with two picks. We'll see what they ultimately go with. That could give us some indication of how their laning phase might start to look like. We see Cersei and Gladiator being shadow picked here. Cersei is actually a hero that we've been seeing a lot in in-house league. We've even seen it banned from time to time. A hero that we didn't really see a whole lot of in uh, Klantor, for example. But really nothing unchanged to her. It's just been kind of a flavor hero. Similar to Devourer. I mean, we, we didn't really see Devourer at all in, in Klantor, but we've been seeing a lot of Devourer here. Oh, there's an Ophelia pickup. We're going to see a Jungler picked up here. In this one, which, uh, well, I'm sure you guys all know that excites me quite a lot. Gets the nerdgasms going quite a bit, but Ophelia is definitely a fun hero. She brings the team fights and the gank presence in the early game, so we're going to have fun casting, I'm sure. And who the heck is going to play Ophelia for the Hellborn side? That's what I want to know. Maybe... Actually, I have no clue who plays Ophelia on that team. They're going to go with the Magmus, though, which definitely a great pairing with the Ophelia. Kind of 
the hero that starts off the engagement, so Ophelia can kind of just take rein. Definitely like the Magmus pick here. I think we're going to see offlane Magmus or solo laning Magmus in some capacity. But uh, it's looking to me like they're going to go with a solo long, dual mid, and a solo short. This is like 2012-2013 Hauntor style of draft here with the solo in the two side lanes, the dual mid, and then the kind of like aggressive carry. Like if they pick up something like a, I don't know, some, some weird hero for short lane like Torturer or something, then it'd be really old school. But ultimately we'll have to see what kind of damage presence they go for with the last pick. Um, again, we could just see a solo prisoner in mid lane and uh, Glacius with a carry in short lane. We could even see a solo prisoner top and a dual mid with a carry. But they are going to go with a Sapphire here uh, on the fourth pick. Last pick coming up here for Legion. Man, I do love me some Sapphire. Uh, a hero that's really great at dealing with the uh, Ophelia pushes too. She can throw down the shard and kind of blast the creeps when she gets an item or two. Trying to think who plays Sapphire here. Maybe it's going to be Chris playing Sapphire Carry. They go with a Kraken, so this could actually be... They're swapping the Pebbles up to Bilbo. He might be actually playing mid for them. Salte might be stepping down from the position 2 role here to kind of fill the, the missing gaps here in his team's lineup. But I actually would like to see them swap the Kraken over to Salte. And give Ned a uh, be he. I think he's good on the roamers. We're seeing the Dampier being right clicked here. That's a carry that Busk likes to play in these very action packed games. I think it would kind of fit the Ophelia theme as well. They did not pick up something like a Lord Sulphorus uh, on that last pick. They did go with a Kraken ultimately. So they could definitely see a, uh, a Dampier. They're going to go with Malakin though. That's a. That's an old school Busk carry, to say the least. So Busk feeling confident with the Malak in here. Um, it is going to be a hero that's very hard for Sapphire to burst down, I feel like, as well, until he gets like the good Juro, maybe plus Rift Shards. I think Malakin's going to be just a little bit too tanky. At least for Sapphire on her own. Now she does have a team, of course, and if Pebbles and Kraken get good starts, that is going to be... Uh, very good for them to say the least. But we do have a lot of team fight heroes in this game. I'm expecting to have a lot of clashes here in the early to mid game. Let's see how they ultimately decide to lane. It's looking like we're going to have a second support behemoth here. Main support Aluna and a sapphire in a tri lane. Pebbles in mid lane and Kraken probably in the off lane. And then we have the Malakin here with Glacius, Prisoner, Magmus, and Ophelia. Going to be man in the jungle. So I'm gonna probably critique Janko quite a lot. He's already not pooling any regen to his solo lanes, which is one of the benefits of running the Ophelia. You don't need all of your gold to jungle. But it looks like we are gonna have more of the defensive lane set up with Malak and Glacius short. Magmus in the off lane roaming. He already picks up the marchers, so he's not even looking to contest this bottom lane whatsoever. We have prisoner for the mid lane. And we have pretty pretty uh pretty standard lanes from Legion. Pebbles mid, Kraken off lane, and then the Sapphire defensive tri lane. I like that Behemoth has gotten the boots here. Um, since they are going to ultimately be up against nobody for now, it will eventually be a solo Magmus, but he will be more of a roamer this game than anything. Stacking the jungle for Sapphire. Sapphire is a hero that uh, she can transition into the jungle very quickly. Malakin definitely needs some, some time before he can work on some jungle stacks, but they do have the Ophelia in there, so they won't be looking to do that anyway. But yeah, Sapphire, she can definitely max her shard and go into jungle as early as level 5 and just burn down triple stacked camps here. So they'll be looking to do that and set her up for that style of game plan.
But Pebbles versus Prisoner, this is more or less Prisoner favored in early game. But we'll see how Bilbo does here. Again, he's got the NA ping. So he's on 150. Ned ain't having none of this Magnus roaming shenanigans. So he's going to go ahead and charge to his tower. Gonna be facing that tri lane, so he's gonna be pretty shut down. But Magma's also in the same boat. He's gonna wait for them to maybe give the lane over to the tower side. Behemoth already roaming into the mid lane. There's the apple coming out from prisoner, so they did already use a stun chuck combo from the pebbles. Perhaps that is why prisoner got so low. Maybe he got tossed into some tower damage. And Bilbo, he's told me he does not get customer mid lane. That is a nonsense if I ever heard it. He's getting Behe ganks one minute into the game. So definitely prioritizing a good start here on the Pebbles. Top lane, we see a freeze come out on the Kraken. Again, he has a tsunami charge. He's gonna stun up Malik in here. But they are going to get him for the Bloodless skill, and that was without the help of the Magmus. Who he does port to the middle lane. They're going to stun in on the uh, on the Pebbles there. Prisoner has not skilled his hook yet, which I do feel like might be a bit of a mistake. As there has been quite a lot of action so far. He does get a level 3, but he's going to miss there on the Pebbles. Magmus could be in some trouble. He doesn't have mana for the Lava Surge, but he's got, got it in two mana. He's going to maybe stun up the cliff here. Oh, no. Nuts. Nuts, you son of a bitch. You son of a bitch, Nuts. That's not how you do it. Oh, he's not too happy with that. So he did ultimately fall down the cliff. I was crossing my fingers that wouldn't happen, but... It does. It does happen. Let's take a look at the creep scores here. We got 22 on Sapphire. She's currently the top creep farmer. Malik not doing too bad though. He's on 21. Both of these guys got more or less free farm here. But uh, we have 14 on the prisoner and 15 on the pebbles. He's going to walk into that hook. He's going to take one tower hit, but he will be fine. Not going to fall from that. Behemoth is in the area. Pebbles, not going to get uh, mana for the combo yet. Here comes Ophelia as the Behemoth Fissure are going to try to deter a kill here, but Pebbles is going to fall. The Skeleton King dealing very good damage here in the early game. And the Ophelia rotation from Janko going to prove to be very good here. He does pick up the early marcher, so he's looking to get in the action here. Not going for the mana ring right away. We have Magmus coming in from the flank here. Prisoner does have mana for a hook very soon. He needs uh, two mana. We'll see if they maybe go for... Uh... Oh, Behemoth going to steal the regen here. Here comes the stun. But Prisoner going to get stunned up by the Aluna, so no hook going to come out in response. And this will force back the Hellborn side. Sapphire doesn't have her headbutt, her reckless charge. She's going the very greedy skill build here. I would definitely like to see her at least put one point in the uh, in the uh, reckless charge here at some point, but for now she's going the farming route, which I can get behind. That's fine. They just will miss out on some kill uh, potential. Uh, she does actually go for the alchemist bones, which uh, I will say it is a bit greedy on a sapphire who does farm very fast with just the shard. But he, I think, is getting it for the Ophelia this game, so it's a bit of a situational pickup. I don't know if I still necessarily like it, but we'll have to wait and see how it pans out. It is a very early Alchemist Bones, so I can get behind an Alchemist Bones pickup, as it is one of my favorite items. I, I can't go behind one of my favorite items in Han. So let's take a look at the GPMs. Malakin with the Bloodlust, he's still at the top here. 500 gold per minute. Sapphire, a bit behind him at 400. They are doing a pretty good job of boxing Kraken out. And Nede is not having a really good time this game. He's more or less on the same GPM as the Magmas. The difference being they have the Ophelia getting a bit of a better farm over the Behemoth. But only 200 GPM on the Ophelia. Not too impressive so far. 
We could see a kill here in the mid lane. Yes, Skeleton King, Minotaur, and Pebbles is going to maybe get caught. Uh, there is the Magmus coming in maybe to set something up here. They are going to get the grip here on the Pebbles. Here comes the Minotaur stomp on top. Fissure going to connect onto both the Prisoner and the Ophelia. Will the Minotaur take out Bilbo here? It will. He almost kicks out the Minotaur, but Ophelia is going to lose her Minotaur here in the end. They are going to get a double tap on him as Kraken going to avoid that Tsunami charge. Will they get in range for a splash auto attack? Not going to be needed. Aluna takes him out and Sunk gets a return double tap. So they do kill both the Prisoner and the Magmus here in exchange for the Pebbles and the Behemoth. So quite the back and forth here already. As Aluna, she's going to go ahead and probably pick up this DD. Trying to save it for Pebbles though, as I think he does want it. I'm going to avoid the hook here. And Pebbles, it looks like he will be moving over for the DD rune. Now Ophelia, she's in the area. She's going to probably take over the Minotaur here. Has another Skeleton King Minotaur combo. Meanwhile, Lava Surge is up in one second. Stun up the cliff this time, Nuts. Don't stun down the cliff. He's trying to make the juke. Oh, he's going to stun down the cliff instead of up the cliff. And he's going to fall. There's the Alchemist Bones coming in from Sapphire. Takes out the Skeleton King. And with the shield, she will take out the Ophelia. Now it's just the Minotaur alone here. And they're trying to take out the last creep from Ophelia. Meanwhile, up in the top lane, Bust does get the last hit. Oh, the possession from Malkin. It is going to fear up Nede. And he, even though he gets the apple off, he is still going to fall here. So they get the tower and the kill there on the Kraken. And it is going to be the battle of the carries this game. As both are up above 500 gold per minute very early on here. Prison are going to line up a hook here. Here comes the prison break. The stun from Aluna not going to protect Sapphire, but here comes Pebbles. He's going to maybe go for the double, uh, well, the single toss, sorry, is only prisoners in the area. And we have the smackdown coming in from Sun because he's now on an ultimate warrior streak. So he is feeling good on the Aluna here. Already up to 300 gold per minute. He's higher than the prisoner from the Hellborn side. Nuts in a pretty offensive spot here, but he's going to be just fine. As I think he was trying to kill the Sapphire here. You can see the crystal coming down. She's going to blast the camps here. And this is the power of Sapphire. She's level 8 now with the maxed out shard and quick shield. Again, still no reckless charge. Chris going extremely greedy here. Top lane Kraken. It's getting slowed up by the Ophelia. Defensive release the Kraken coming out, but here is Nuts on the Magmus. And they're going to snipe him out with a sword throw. And that will be that. But we have Ophelia. She's level 6 now with the touch available. Still only with two creeps. Has the Catman and the Vagabond. They want to be aggressive here. Pebbles getting dove here. Here comes the stun for Magmus as Maligan is here. Crystal doing some really good damage. They are going to lose the, the Pebbles here. Prisoner comes in with the prison break. It will be broke by Aluna, but Sapphire going to get pulled in. She just pick up the Energizer here early on. So going for some fighting items. Meanwhile, Behemoth is going to go down to the Ophelia and the Magmus. And again, he doesn't have the Reckless Charge, so he cannot lock them down on top of the Crystal. He does have mana currently, or does not have mana currently, as he does spec the charge level 9. Ophelia getting power thrown, Nede going to take him out there with the charge landing. They finally stop the Ophelia. So it is an 8 to 8 hero kill score, very uh, even on gold, but experience in favor of Hellborn still. Or Legion, sorry. So even though Hellborn has the jungler, they are not leading on experience. Ah, oh, we have a vote to pause coming out. Looks like I'll have time to catch on my breath here and have some water. I'm going to go ahead and hydrate myself in the chat here. I'm going to redeem, redeem, hydrate, self-redeem here as I'm currently needing some hydration. All right, we've had a couple of sips there. We're good. We're hydrated. But yeah, Sapphire goes for the Energizer here on top of the Steam Boot. So definitely going for some early game items here. We see Ophelia as well goes for the Energizer, which I do like, but Mana Ring is like 100% core on Ophelia. You always want to go Mana Ring. And it is very good when you're grouping up with your team and diving towers. 
to keep giving everyone mana. So I do want to see him pick up a mana ring, ring of sorcery at some point. <clears throat> Kraken, he's not having a good time this game, but again, that's kind of the nature of the game. Everyone other than the carries are around 150 to 250 GPM or a little under 300. As Kraken Abuser. Huh. What's Kraken? Oh, I think he cliff walked. Aha. That is abusing cliff walking. Jenko in game equals pause. Yep. Jenko, he's been a pause machine lately. Maybe he's next on the 24 hour ban list. He's holding up the games. So, we have Malakin going for the Insanitarius. A lot of the times we see players go for the Whispering, but I like the Insanitarius here. He's also been joining his team for a lot of early engagements, thus netting himself three kills here. Okay, guys, don't spam too much hydration. You don't want to drown me to death, right? There, I'll go ahead and take another sip for you guys. You guys are beautiful. All right. Um... I like that he's going for the Insanitarius here. Oh, nice snipe coming in from Aluna. Game sense? He's gonna yoink some of those creeps here. Um, Prisoner's going for the Steam Boots, but generally you don't want to pick up gloves first. You want to pick up the stat pieces. We have Veiled Rotted Magmas here. It's going to get broken by the Pebbles. Uh, not the best use of the Veiled Rot there. <clears throat> Dragon is getting a little bit of space here. As he's currently pushing up the uh, the top lane. You see Hellborn going for a Congor here. Now Malakin... I don't know if he's as tanky as he thinks he is. But... I'm gonna tank with the Minotaur here. Probably wanna use the Stomp as well. And not just suicide your Minotaur. Not the best micro. Also, Ophelia being level 6 at 11 minutes is quite underwhelming. Just loses the creeps there. Doesn't use his Ophelia's touch. So, a lot of, uh, a lot of minuses from me. They are gonna ultimately get the Kongor, but this could've, could've been a little bit prettier to the eyes. They're gonna get the job done there. And let's take a look here at what the players are going for. We got stats on Magmus, stats on Prisoner, stats on Ophelia, stats on Galatius, and you guessed it, stats on Malakin. Everyone goes for stats. Seems to be the the trend now, as that did get buffed and moments we got nerfed. Fisher from Sate gonna connect here. He's just gonna cancel the ports. The crystal is not going to take out the Magmas though, he's just a little bit too slippery. Meanwhile, they are letting Kraken kind of freely push this top lane, which I would like to see Hellborn address. Um, because if he free farms up here and takes out the tower, he's going to be very close to Portal Key, so they should pick up on that. Ophelia is finally level 7, a few minutes behind schedule. Why is it called stats? Okay, it's enchantment, vitality. You really want me to say that? En Enchantment Vitality! Uh, tower is not going to go down, but they are going to take out the Kraken. No cake for you. And they do deny the tower up there. Glacius going to get the credit on the deny. Pebbles, not having a good time here. He's 0-3. Below 300 GPM. We're not going to see a very early portal key. So his snowball factor is going to be pretty limited this game. Sapphire also soaking the uh, the jungle. So he's not going to have that a uh, couple of camps to work on. To get him that blink. Prisoner just forced out the invisibility rune there. So yeah, not a lot of gold across the board. It's mostly all dumped on the two carries. Sapphire already up to 640 GPM, by the way. She's got a Shroud at 13 minutes. So this Alchemist Bone, safe to say, has been very good. Um, normally you get around a 
10 to 12 minute shroud with steam boots. But he's got energizer, shroud, and alchemist bone, so he's made it work. Oh, he's gonna fall here though. They did not have the burst to bring down their prisoner. He was just a little bit too tanky. And they're gonna get the pebbles and the Aluna. This is going to backfire completely. Um, as I believe they did use the Ophelius touch there as well. He's gonna pour it home the prisoner. I'm gonna take out the tower. Um, no, it was the Malakin who got poured at home. Sorry, the prisoner is still here. Maybe they want to send Busk to the top lane to go farm. Kraken getting very close to his blink, but this Ophelia push has been unanswered. They are going to take out two towers here. So definitely going to pay the price for that missed kill on the prisoner there. Behemoth. Kind of in the same boat as Kraken, they're trying to get their PKs. So they have a timing window coming up here. Pebbles, not even close to his unfortunately. He's got a lot of build up here. He's only on a thousand gold. So this is going to be like a 18, 16 to 18 minute portal key from Pebbles. But Behemoth and Kraken are very close. Or at least the Kraken coming out here, Prisoner is going to fall. Gets uh, caught a little bit too far out of position. Magmus also being very aggressive here. We'll see if Sapphire can catch him. There's the shard into the headbutt. Do they have a fissure in one second? There it is, and this should be a dead Magmus. One more hit, and Sapphire will take him out. So they do give up a pair of kills here on the Hellight of Hellborn. So Luna gonna get a very deep ward here by the tower. They are looking to definitely pressure this one. <clears throat> Malakin currently using the Veiled Rot. Um, I think he wants to maybe steal some Ancients or maybe set up a kill. But he's being very, very greedy here. We'll see if this works out for Busk. He's going to run into the Pebbles here. There's the Possession coming out. And no skill is going to be used by Pebbles. He does have the Stalagmites on cooldown. And that's a very unfortunate timing there as uh, that could have very well been a kill, but here comes Kraken with his brand new portal gate. Do they have the burst though? There's the heal from Ophelia. Mac uh, Malakin gonna get ported out and he will stay alive and they do pick up both the Kraken and the Behemoth kills. Very well executed here by Hellborn um, to not only bait out skills on the Malakin, but they do survive and they pick up three kills here. A very large momentum swing now for them. We'll see what Sapphire decides to go for next. I think something like a Genjuro could be very, uh, very good here to just have some extra damage. And I think after the Genjuro, we could go for a defensive item. Malakin does go for Elder Parasite following the Incinitaria. So he's going very aggressive damage build here. We'll probably see. Either a Shrunk, I, I think Shrunken Head is just necessary this game due to Legion's lineup, even the Sapphire being a good majority of magic damage. I think there is no reason for him to not go Shrunken as his next item. And I think he'll follow up the Shrunken with a, with a damage item. You cannot escape justice. You I was going to get hooked here. There's the Crystallize coming in from Sapphire. It is a level 1 Crystallize. They do wake up and Pebbles is going to fall. You know, off in the jungle, they do get the Ophelia kill with the Shockwave from Behemoth. And the I believe the release the Kraken was used. Meanwhile, they're going to catch Sapphire here. And that's going to be bad news for the Legion side. So they do lose their, their top farmer there. Now again, he is still farming better than the Malakin, but... That is only going to last for so long. But Luna and Magmus can exchange lives here as Magmus does die for it. And it looks like that will conclude the fight. We have all the ultimates on cooldown for the Legion side. And Ophelia, he does go for Shaman's Headdress. He's going to be going for that barrier right off. I 
think Janko definitely didn't watch my Ophelia guide because being level 10 at 18 minutes definitely not not part of the guide. And going Energizer into Shamans. But we have Kongor up in one minute. Both Kongors, in fact. We'll see if maybe the Elborn side tries to force double Kong into a token. Which will put Legion in a predicament to uh, to respond. Currently see Veiled Rotted Kraken. Now they have vision of this. Uh, that they are in the area here. See if they can get the initiation they're looking for. Evaluna making her way down to the bot lane. We could have a clash potentially down here. You need control. I think they bought something on the sapphire. I hope it's a big item though. I don't want to see him buy any more small stuff. I want to see him go Genjuro into Shrunken. There's the jump from Pebbles. They're gonna catch Magmus with the release of Kraken. They did get that ward down. Kraken is going to fall now. Aluna gonna get hooked in by the prisoner. And this is gonna be more so cleaned up by the Hellborn side as Malakin picks up a double tap. That's gonna queue up the Kongor here for them as well. And I don't think we'll see a fight here, but maybe they try to steal it. Revord is down. Just barely missing this ward of sight. Sapphire gonna miss or take out the shackle rather. Here comes the shockwave from the behemoth. They take out the prisoner. I feel they're gonna survive on very low life. Malakin, by the way, gets the counter kill on the pebbles on the uphill here as they do have vision up here. He's gonna sword throw out of dodge. And Sapphire is on the hunt. He's trying to pick off some low, low targets, but not gonna find anyone. Actually goes for a firebrand here. <clears throat> Valuing the mobility. <laughs> Definitely not the item route I would have went for, but the shroud I would say is fine. Let's see, he's go going to maybe go for Geobane this game. Definitely think he needs to start picking up some damage items. Malakin goes for the shield breaker level 2. So he's going full aggression here. Takes out the Aluna here. Does have a possession, but here comes the charge and to release the Kraken coming out. There's the Crystallize to stall some Magmus damage. Malakin gonna get taken out here by the Sapphire. He picks up a double tap. Hook and a miss from the prisoner. And we'll see if Legion looks to re-engage here. Magmus does have a lava surge up, but Bebbles, no portal key up currently. They're gonna try to catch the prisoner here. Nice wall coming in from Sante. Double stun though from the Magmus as the hook is gonna connect on the Kraken. He does get his charge off and he is gonna survive. They take out both the Magmus and the prisoner without any casualties. Ophelia trying to pick a target here, but she's gonna get stomped in the head by the Behemoth. The headbutt gonna knock her over the trees, but here comes Pebbles. Ophelia's touch coming out. He's gonna avoid the power throw, but it will only delay his death. And it will be a full genocide coming in for the Legion side here. And they are going to stall the Congor as well. Huge fight for the Legion side. They even take out the ward here. So that was pretty fun to see. As Pebbles now sitting on a thousand gold as well. And there's the Genjuro picked up from Sapphire. I love it. I love the Genjuro. He's even going to buy the Reju Potion here. We see Bailed Rod and Magmus. He's going to run into the Aluna. See if the follow up gets here. There's a portal key on the Glacius, by the way. Going to take out the Aluna here in their own jungle. So, post team fight, we have Malakin trailing Sapphire by about 100 gold per minute, but otherwise, the rest of the GPM is looking fairly even. We have almost only a 500 gold difference here uh, between the two teams. Going to have a, a slight experience advantage here. Prisoner trying to land the hook here, but Pebbles maybe gonna go in with a combo, release the Kraken coming out. From Kraken, they're gonna hold down the prisoner and take him out. Is there gonna be any further engagement? Looks like the fissure wall did miss to block them off. That's 
Fire is pumping out the DPS now with the Genjuro. Definitely hitting that shard pretty hard. We'll see if she upgrades this Firebrand into anything or goes for either an offensive item or defensive item next. Typically with Sapphire, you do want Shrunken Head um, into like Rift Shards. But I don't know if Chris is going to go that route. Now Rift Shards did get a little bit of a nerf as they do actually uh, pick off the pebbles in the mid lane. Uh, Rift Shards did get a cost nerf from 26.25 I think to 33.25 so it's a bit more expensive on the uh, on the initial level one but the recipes are still the same cost. And Hellbarn going for their Kongor here. Malakin chunking in the DPS here. Picks up the Shieldbreaker 3. I think he's gotta be eyeing a shrunken head now. It's it's getting to that point where can't be letting the sapphire crystal and the initiators catch you and disable you. It's definitely gonna need a shrunken head as his next item. There's the Geo Bane though, which uh, I think he feels he needs maybe against the prisoner. He's valuing also the mobility. Going a very mobile route here. Ooh. Kraken gonna go in and lock down the Malik in here, but here comes the damage. They're turning around, they're gonna take out the Kraken. The Ophelia's Touch is gonna get used here. He has the Barry Rattle as well. And Bus is currently in the trees. Oh, we have a bit of a lag spike there. DDoS engaged. They have a double stun from the Magmas, but the hook's going to be a bit too late to follow it up. And there's the Crystallize from the Sapphire. <laughs> He's thinking about maybe going back in, but it would be very greedy. They do have vision of the entire Kong fight here. He's going to send the illusions in. I don't think they're going to get here in time. We're going to use the Genjiro here. Looks like he avoided the Magmas for now, but could maybe go in and kill the Glacius, but it would be very very risky without a shrunken head pickup so he's gonna go ahead and just avoid them for now we see Aluna picking up the arcane bomb here against the Ophelia great pickup from the Aluna Devil's going for the shrunken head. He does have the staff, so he's going a very defensive route. Going to be um, only locking them down, not going to be dealing too much damage this game. Not going for the shards and staff combo. We have the tablet, I think, finished by the Magmas here. Behemoth also finding a tablet for himself. Oh, we have a high ground push coming in here as the token is picked up on the Malakin. There's the toss into stun. The stun is going to miss. Magma's going to channel his eruption in the middle of the base. Sapphire going to take some heavy pressure here from the eruption. Meanwhile, Shrunken Head activated by the prisoner. Um, did use the prison breaker already. Here comes the shockwave, only locking down the Glacius. So they do end up taking out the Magmas. Meanwhile, the Ophelia's touch saving prisoner in the background as he gets jumped by the pebbles. Malakin does get the token taken out, but he is alive and about half life here. No possession currently on him. And it looks like Bus not interested in re-engaging. He does have a portal key, so still no shrunken head picked up. Here comes the damage from Sapphire. They're going to take out the prisoner. Sapphire going to survive for now. Malakin does port back in. He's going to survive on 12 life. They take out the Glacius. Kraken going for the Ophelia. Going to sacrifice himself. And I think they're going to take out the Malakin here. The area idol not going to save him. And Janko could also be in some trouble. He goes for the TP. Oh no! He oh Sate. He should have tabletted the Ophelia instead. Maybe he didn't have vision though. I think he was fogged, so I can cut him a little slack there. But oh, that's so unfortunate. He gets the TP out on the Ophelia. And there was a buyback used from the Behemoth here in this fight to hold the high ground. They ultimately did save the melee racks, but they did lose their tower. 
Busk continues to be very greedy with his item build, which is surprising because Busk is usually a very defensive carry player. He usually goes for very safe items. So, definitely still lacking that chunking head for now. Sapphire sitting on 3k gold. I feel like could be in some trouble here. And look at that damage coming in from the shard. Get gripped up by the Ophelia, but he takes out the creep with the alchemist bones. There will be all rots being used here by the Legion side. Luna going to avoid the sword throw there. Great deja vu port coming in from Sunk. Shockwave catching the Malik in here. Do they have the damage to bring him down? He gets the Insanitarius toggle at the last second. They lack that little bit of damage as Sapphire goes down in the background. She gets CC'd and Malaking going to get locked down here by the release of the Kraken. But he... Oh, he's going to get tabletted up the cliff and Malakin survives. Oh, he stunned him out of his own release the Kraken so the damage wasn't there. So many things just going wrong for Legion in that fight. We're going to see a buyback coming in from the Aluna. Power throw to take out the creeps. He does miss the second creep wave, though. There was a buyback from the Ophelia, by the way, in this fight. So he, they want to push this top racks here. We have double buybacks from both the Pebbles and the Sapphire. Going to once again delay his shrunken head. But Elborn is going to be thwarted backwards as the remaining cast going to uh, respawn here on the Legion team. We have Glacius picking up a tablet. Got a lot of items coming in from both sides now. So we're entering the 30 minute mark here. So three players, or four players down, one buyback on the Legion side. Only the Ophelia down a buyback for the Elborn side. So we see the GPM chart kind of staying the same despite the buyback situation. Sapphire continues to remain about 100 gold per minute above the Malakin. Busk needs 1k gold now for the Shrunken Head. Sapphire about in the same boat actually, which is funny because they are at different GPMs, but again, Sapphire down a buyback, so the 100 GPM difference kind of reflecting the buyback situation here. So Hellborn, they're grouped up as five down in the bot lane. See Legion a bit more spread out. They're trying to find the farm across the board for their shrunken heads. Pebble still needs about 900 gold for his shrunken. Sapphire needs about 600 gold for her shrunken. So if they're able to take out this tower, they're gonna get the team a lot closer to their shrunken timings. Sapphire has the gold now. She should be right clicking shrunken head. I cannot see Sapphire going another greedy item here. Um, I mean, Rift Shards would be pretty dangerous to go for here because he's still going to get locked down by Magmas and stuff. It would be pretty fun from a spectator's point of view, but definitely think he should go for the Shrunken Head first. I'm going to clean out the Creep Wave here. From downtown. Probably see Behemoth counter push the bot lane. Sapphire being very aggressive here. Now they even have a ward, but he did shroud from the tree line. Oh, he could maybe kill the Magmus here. The steam bath came in. It actually avoided the stun, I believe. Or, well, I think he was stunned, but coming out of the invis. Took some heavy pressure there by the uh, the bulwark you probably think he's still up here but as we can see he's already ported out we'll see if anyone tps to defend this bot lane 
Oh, yeah, some, some damage coming in on the tier 3 tower now. Galatius has higher gold per minute than both Magnus and Ophelia. Sometimes she can't make this stuff up. Magnus gonna get a nice line stun here. We'll see if the follow ups there. Prisoner just not ready uh, in range to follow it up and hook the behemoth there. That could have very well been a, a behemoth pick off. But they're not gonna get punished there at the base. So we have Glowstone picked up by Glacius as well. It's got three enchantments, vitalities. You're welcome, Marloni. Three enchantment fatalities of attribute here on the glacius. We see both sides going for their Kongors. Double damage Malakin. He's got the Shunken Head picked up now. He's feeling really comfortable with this pair of items here, or set of items, however you want to call it. Sapphire still being a greedy monster, still not picking up his Shunken. Slain. It would have been nice if Aluna could have sniped it, but she's currently sniping the bot lane, keeping them preoccupied down here, which I'm fine with. It would have also been difficult to time the steal into token. But we see Hellborn team for... They're going to roll down middle lane. I don't know if they feel they need to force the game to end. Maybe they feel they don't have late game. Which, I could get behind it. I think the Kraken Behemoth kind of scale a bit better than the supporting cast here. And also, uh, I might be bold in saying this, but I think Sapphire outcarries Malakin in late game. I think her DPS, she can wipe teams with her shard. Whereas Malakin, he can cleave a bit with his, or splash with his possession, but... It's, I would say it's a bit more difficult for Malakin to like deal the same team fight damage that a Sapphire deals. He can definitely deal it over time, but Sapphire does a bit more team fight burst. If that makes sense. But Chris, he wants to put on a show for the stream, and I'm I'm okay with it. I mean, I I think he should go for the Shunken, but the Rift Shards, if he's able to play this the right way. It is insanely strong on Sapphire. If he can get a crit or two coming out of the uh, initial opening of the... Oh, he misclicked the Shrunken here on the Prisoner. That's going to probably force them to retreat. Now, they still have the DD. Is this another DD? Man, I feel like Busk always has DD. This is insane. All right, that's... Uh... <laughs> that's not the play, Busk. You you've played this game for a long time. You know better than that. That's way too, that's way too greedy. Magma's gonna avoid the initiation there. Oh, Pebbles, he's on the hunt though. He's, he's kind of high in this Magmus, I think. Oh, but he catches the, uh, the prisoner. He's gonna do a chuck backward. Here comes the wall from Behemoth, and again, he doesn't have the shrunken because he used it by accident. There's the crystallize coming out. Oh no, he got woken up early, so I think the damage restrain doesn't kick in. I think um I think the damage restrain only works uh it only works if it's on expiration. I I could tell him, but I think I'm probably I probably shouldn't do that as a spectator. It's actually, if you read it here, it says upon expiration, meaning it has to naturally wear off. You cannot wake them up early and they get restrained, which uh, he might have not been aware of. Understandable. It is a new change to the, the way the crystallize works here. So he was expecting him to get restrained. Um, so I, can, I, I can't fault him too much for that, but. They did ultimately get the kill in the end, so it wasn't really any harm done in the end. Maybe something he'll consider the next time he uses the Crystal Eyes. <clears throat> a 
Ophelia picks up a Abyssal Skull. Given the state of the game, I think this is fine. It's a teamfight aura. They have the Bulwark as well and the Magmas picked up. Um, I'm going to be interested to see what Busk decides to replace here. I think he actually probably values his portal key over his, uh, his Elder Parasite. I think the Elder Parasite might get switched out for a damage source of item to deal with the Sapphire. Maybe maybe even a symbol actually. Prisoner are going to go in here on the Behemoth, but he's going to be turned on as he was going for the pickoff by himself. And at these kind of high level games, it's really risky to go for solo kills like this, especially in late game. You more or less got to kind of do these kind of plays with your team. So a bit questionable, but he did almost have it. So also a little bit unlucky that the team support was there. Saving that be his ass. Sate is loving his team right now. But uh, Aluna goes for Light Brand. <laughs> She's gonna go Grimoire, I guess, for some spell damage boost. Can't say I've seen that in a while. I mean, sometimes we see Restoration Stone even for the six power throw, but it's a lot of mana to commit to uh, before having another item picked up. But he's going the damage route here. Behe picks up a Spike Bowl, a huge pickup against the single core Malakin lineup. If they can utilize that to kind of shut him down, that's going to give Sapphire a big edge. It's going to be a pickoff on the Magmus. The lockdown is there, and Sapphire gets the burst. So she's still making good use of this uh, Roof Shards pickup. Now, if she wants to, she could pick up level 4 and still have buyback. Um, so probably swap the, I think the Energizer before the Bones, but we'll, we'll see. Maybe he doesn't value the Bones as much as the Energizer for the Shrunken eventually. Um, the Legion side is tipping to the bottom lane. Smoke on the Behemoth is going to be used here. We'll see if they... If Prisoner farms down here in the bot lane, he could very well be the, the victim. Now they're not showing on the top lane. You gotta almost expect if you're Hellborn when they're not showing even at their own base that they are hunting you for some kills. And they very much recognize that this is kind of the case here. Magma's going to respawn here, so everyone's alive now for the Hellborn side. They did buy out that Demonic Breastplate, by the way, before he did fall, so they do have a nice pairing of, uh, of items. Kraken going to get caught here. Looks like Malakin initiated that with a possession. He's going to sell his portal key, it looks like. So he wants the Elder Parasite, actually, and I didn't see what he bought. We're going to get the answer to our question here in a second. Grimoire was finished on Aluna. That's a huge item pickup. She's 326 gold per minute. She's almost more farm than the Pebbles, who has 3,000 gold. I think Bilbo is probably going to go Staff, because I think on its own, the Spell Charge just maybe doesn't do enough. Now, they do have a Barrier Idol, so it is still a good pickup, but I think at this point, they're valuing the Lockdown. I think the Staff, if he's able to toss three guys I mean that is so much lockdown for a sapphire to come in with the shard and just pump in damage so he goes the geobane here uh, the reason he picks this up is because they have the bola uh, on the behemoth and also the geobane is pretty good on malakin because he goes into ranged form so it's not really that bad on malakin on its own as well We have the Kongors being both attempted here. I would actually love to see them try to go for the snipe here before finishing their own Kongor. Can Sunk do it? Oh, he was so close! It was actually like, I think less than a second uh, between this power throw hitting. But they're gonna trade Kongors. <clears throat> they almost got the steal. 
We have a Wingbow Sapphire. You know, they did nerf Wingbow on Ranged Hero, so it is a bit less good. He only gets 20% evasion as a Ranged Hero. Um, but uh, he is going to get extra attack range, so he is actually 700 range here as a Sapphire. That is quite nice, I will say. So it is going to make him have safer distance, but he's going to get less evasion when he's actually fighting the Malakin 1v1. So that is the changes to the Wingbow. He, gets, uh, he does not get the passive movement speed since he's not melee. But... Um, Interested to see how the new Wingbow works out for him. Again, still not going for Shrunken. He's going full greed here. Full full DPS style of Sapphire, which is, again, very fun as a spectator to watch. I want to see him just kind of get that nice team fight where Pebbles picks up the staff, group chucks them all, uh, and then Sapphire gets to pound, pound them from downtown with the shard. It's going to be fun if that does line up. Well, we'll see if Hellborn can kind of not let that happen here as well. Spike Bola perhaps just finished by the Prisoner as well, so both sides getting a Bola to work with. Now, Sapphire already had his Geobane, so once they recognize the Bola's picked up, but it might be a secret here. They might catch them off guard with it. <clears throat> they might misuse that Geobane not knowing it's in play. Oh, Behemoth is Veiled Rotted. Oh, he's going to run into Ophelia! Those for the stomp. He does miss. Kraken not going for the jump just yet. Here comes the stun from the Magnus. He throws out a Fissure, and he's not quite sure how many people are in the area. He's going to go for the port out, and he will be fine. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Aluna getting initiated on, but here comes Pebbles with a counter Stalagmite stun, and they do not kill the Shackle right away, but he will take it out. Uh, the biggest cooldown being used here was the prison break. Magmus actually goes for the stun. But they did not see it, it looks like. <clears throat> it's kind of funny how this game for the last, like, I want to say 20 minutes, give or take, has been almost this identical chart. We've had the supported cast of both sides between 2 and like 350 GPM on everyone. It's very balanced. And the carries have just been kind of hovering around these same marks, more or less. Sapphire does buy out the level 4 Rift Shard here. She has buyback. Still holding on to the Energizer. Um, Alright, I know I keep saying Shrunken Head. I've said this for a long time. But I think now we're at that point where if he does not swap out the Energizer for a Shrunken, then it's questionable. If he goes like Doombringer or something, I swear to God, it's going to be fun, but I don't think he should do it. It's 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 not that type of game where he should be feel forced into going a Desperation item. You cannot escape justice. Then it's going to get caught here. Shungan has activated by prisoner, so Behe will not go in with a counter shockwave, but it's going to be sacrificed. Meanwhile, at the base, the tower almost falls. The Geobang going to cause some issues here for the Hellborn side as he almost takes out the tower, split pushing up there. Magma's going to maybe get caught here. He's a portal key up in one second. He's going to actually tablet down the cliff. He's thinking about going back in, though. He stops the Behemoth's portal key. He's going to hit him here with the Lava Surge. Now, Behe. Can he get out of dodge? That was the question. Here goes the shockwave into the fissure. And Magmus. Oh, the Ophelia's touched though at the last second. Janko times it perfectly. It keeps Magmus alive. But Magmus. Oh, he gets too overconfident there. He does go down. Tries to stop Behe from getting the portal key out. Now, meanwhile, the base is being pressured here by the Legion side. So, if anything, Behe and. Uh, uh, is more so distracting to three players and he does pour it out Magma's going to fall here and they break not only break the tower but they get half damage on the racks here they are still hanging around the area they will kind of fall back a little bit here is Kraken trying to counter push we have a post ace from the Malakin 
Ports into the bottom lane. Bilbo should have bought something. He had almost 5,000 gold. Should be the staff, right? Yeah. Okay, I like that. I think he goes staff into resto. Um, I think he completely skips shards this game. And Oh, they actually killed the behemoth here in the mid lane. Drunken Ed was used by the prisoner. They also did use the downpour. Sapphire in the top lane almost gets the Rax. He's going to be shrouded up here. Here comes the bound eye from prisoner, though. He's going to Geobane off the uh, majority there of the Bola. Just Bola immunity right now. He's going to go in with the shard. Here comes the damage coming in, and he will take out the Ophelia. The 600 crits coming in. And now the crystallize going to happen here. Here comes the headbutt. The auto attacks with the shield and Glacius goes down. It's a double tap coming out for the Sapphire. Meanwhile, at the Legion base, Malakin currently has his port down, but it is going to come back up. Sapphire going in for another kill here. The Magmus did have his Lava Surge on cooldown. He's going to get the Rax. He hits the shard, but there's the shrunken activated from the Malakin. Possession comes out. And will they be able to bring him down the Wingbow? Only going to miss once or twice. And he did get the melee racks though, and two casualties. This did come at a glacious buyback as well. So they do bring down the sapphire, but he made some noise before they were able to make that happen. So sapphire showing us some of his power here. Gets a couple of kills and taking out the melee racks before they ultimately do bring him down. Now Malakin, he's got 6,000 gold here. I think Busk's got to be eyeing. Some kind of item swaps here is both the Elder and the Insanitarius. Rather inexpensive items that he could look to replace here. The question being, what will he go for? Here comes the Shockwave, though. Buyback comes in from Chris on the Sapphire, and they will take him out. That was almost uh, Behemoth soloing him with the assistance from Maluna. They're going to get the, uh, the Pebbles in the bottom lane, but they also... Take out the Glacius here, mid lane. Kraken also going down bot lane. So there was a clash down in the bot lane with Magmus and Prisoner while they were getting that counter kill in the Malakin mid lane. So we'll probably see Busk use his first buyback in response to the second buyback being used by the Sapphire. He's going to have to buy an item here. He sells the Energizer. I got to say it should be that Shrunken Head. Did he buy a Doombringer? I'm being told it was a Doombringer. And Chris, he is one for the viewers. He's not going to go the defensive item here. He wants the Doombringer to work. He's being very patient here. The Magmus does commit with the stun. Here comes the damage, though. The 1,300 crits from the Rift Shards as he takes out both the Magmus and the Ophelia. And we have second buyback coming in from the Ophelia. But, boy, don't get too overconfident if you're... Sapphire, there is still three players alive for the Hellborn side here. F almost 1,400 Rift Shards crits on the Shard coming in. We got a game here, ladies and gentlemen. All three of uh, Hellborn's lanes here, currently the Rex is exposed. Now again, they did take out the melee in the top lane. Mid lane, half damage on the melee Rex. And for the Legion side, their top lane is exposed. With the bottom or the middle lane, sorry, half HP on the tower here. <clears throat> well, Behemoth currently smoked up in the mid lane. Not sure if they see this. Malakin is going to go ahead and buy a Savage Mace. He does not have a buyback on the Malakin currently, so he has a way to deal with the. Uh, the Wingo here. Here comes the Shockwave. Only hitting on the Ophelia. Not the best placement. And here comes the Chuck from Pebbles. Malakin is almost dead, but here comes the Bola. They're locking him down, and he will fall. He does not have a buyback. Prisoner getting held down, and they release the Kraken. Glacier's is going to get stunned up. The downpour has been canceled, and that is a genocide, folks. We have Legion team going to force out the Concede Boat from the Hellborn side. And, well, that was a pretty fun finish there to our game here. 53-minute mark. We will have our winner, the Legion team. And Chris made the Doombringer and the No Shrunken at Sapphire workout in the end. He finishes off with almost 800 GPM, about 765 there to finish it off. So that was a pretty fun finish. And one of my favorite heroes, Sapphire, picking up the W here.